I have had a lot of interest in my oval moxen antenna that was published in the February 2023 issue of QSD magazine and I thought I would do a YouTube video with some additional construction details. The oval moxen antenna has been a real game changer for the controlled housing area that I live in. A directive antenna like a Yagi or moxen greatly reduces the backside noise and this can make a huge difference on hearing weak signals. The gain, of course, helps your uh, transmitted power as well, but I think the uh, major gain is the uh, improvement in uh, noise reduction. The oval moxen has uh, taken my high neighborhood no noise down to uh, almost nothing, and this has allowed me to get my DXCC on sideband over the last several years. It's well worth putting up a directive antenna, no matter where you happen to live. The Oval Moxen is made from three-piece fiberglass fishing rods. They are a real nice product and I mounted them on 24-inch pieces of 1x4 pine that you can see here. I did put a couple coats of exterior house paint on the wooden rod holders to make sure that they would last. And now these have been done really well over the last several years. Here is a view of how I use the two-hole strap clamps that you can find at your local hardware store to secure the fishing rods onto the pine boards. There is not a lot of force on those strap clamps, so I just use normal self-tapping wood screws to hold them in place. To hold the wooden element plates onto the boom, I used U-bolts, which you can also find at your local hardware store. I used fiberglass tubing from a 43 foot tall mast that I bought from MSJ years ago, but I see that DX Engineering has a very similar one for sale as well. These fiberglass masts have a wall thickness anywhere between a tenth of an inch and an eighth of an inch depending on where you get them from. The tubing is quite versatile for any kind of antenna work. I did put a coating of epoxy uh, on the uh, fiberglass as uh, within a year of putting them up without it I had splintering occurring from the UV radiation from the sun. The two-part epoxy I put on has uh, completely cleared up that problem and the uh, outside of the tubes are nice and smooth even after a couple of years of sun exposure. For the boom of the Opal Moxen antenna you can also use a wooden closet rod uh, as those come in uh, lengths uh, between 8 and 12 feet, so uh, you can usually uh, find those at your hardware store. Aluminum tubing would work as well. Uh, the uh, boom is not excited in this antenna, so it can be either conductive or non-conductive. I actually have two telescoping pieces of fiberglass tubing on my Olo Moxon, and that was mainly because I was experimenting with various uh, different types of antennas uh, and different element spacing. The antenna is very light at about 7 pounds, so it is very easy to manage all by yourself. This is a very simple project and those fishing rods are just used to support the wire elements. I used the strap clamps on the mast to boom connection because I wanted to be able to remove the mast quickly. Here you can see the master boom plate and that's just another piece of 3 quarter inch pine with the U-bolts holding the boom in place and the two-hole strap clamps uh, ready to accept the mast. Again, I use the uh, two-hole strap clamps there so I can move the mast in and out easily. You can also note that the weight of the antenna boom is supported by the very end of the mast, so there's no force being transmitted downward on those strap clamps. The wire elements are 14 gauge insulated wire, and here are the dimensions for how long each piece is. The driven element is 5% shorter than the reflector element, which is pretty standard for Yagi and Moxon designs. And then there is a 6 inch gap on each side between the director and reflector. I used some 3 quarter inch PVC pipe cut lengthwise for the 6 inch separators, uh, and that makes the total length of these separators about 8 inches long. I cut keyhole cutouts in them so I could slide the antenna elements in and out quickly and what you see at the end of the wire elements is a uh, radio controlled model airplane wheel collar. Those are really handy for uh, securing the end of your uh, elements. I trim the driven element until I get the SWR to what I want it, want it to be. And one question I had from a ham was why are the elements on this antenna so much shorter than other Moxon designs? And the reason is, is the velocity factor of the insulated wire placed upon the fiberglass fishing rods 
uh, reduces the velocity factor significantly. If you have an antenna out in free space, the formula for uh, a half wavelength is 492 divided by the frequency in megahertz. That gives you the uh, half wave dipole uh, length in feet. But uh, all the ham radio books here on Earth assume that we're going to be using some standard wire for antennas and that we're also going to have some end effect. So uh, they use a velocity factor of 0.95 so the equation becomes 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz, which everybody is familiar with. Okay, so there was a little bit more detail on the oval Moxon beam for 15 meters. If you've uh, got any questions, uh, please feel free to leave a comment or email me via my address on the qrz.com page. Uh, thanks for watching and happy hamming!